thanks so much, Deirdre. Um, that was that was really great and it gives us new insight into the kit um, and the way that you both spoke about um, how craft can connect across different areas of the curriculum was really inspiring. So I'm just going to hand over to Francis now actually, um, who is um, mediating the chat. Um, Francis, if you can let us know if there have been any questions, um, that would be fantastic. So we've got no um, no questions in the chat just now, but if you do have any um, things that you would like to ask either um, Deirdre or Lydia to expand on from their presentation or, or indeed the wider Maitland team, um, do, do feel free to pop your question in the chat. Um, I can also see next to me uh, a keen member of the um, Maitland team itself who um, has a question. So maybe whilst we um, probably in a few minutes to add anything themselves, I'm going to um, ask uh, Lucy to <laughs> share hers because I can see her keen to come yeah. in. Thanks so much, Francis, and thank you, um, Lydia and Deirdre, for your presentations. That's really, really brilliant and, and fascinating to hear. You know how the kit was developed and how you experienced working with that. Um, so, just it's a question for Lydia actually, and, and potentially the the kind of wider group is. You know, what's your experience of um, accessing materials for craft activities in the classroom? Um, and also maybe what's your, uh, you know, if there's any barriers to that and how, how you do that. And if you have noticed any um, kind of differences between, you know, like children's experience in handling materials as well and their familiarity with that. You mentioned a little bit about the threads that were in the packs that, we, that were provided. Yeah, I think um, I, it can sometimes feel like you don't have necessarily the best materials at your disposal. So um, I think it's being quite, you have to be quite creative with, uh, you know, saving up things that um, maybe that's going to be useful for a project because the reality is there's not usually a lot of budget for buying in like specific um, craft items. Um, I think it's, re I personally think it's really important that we, we try and find the opportunities for children to use these things and to have, uh, like, the, maybe once get an opportunity to use clay whilst they're in school or just so you've, you've experienced making in a different way. Um, and I know that I've I've taught children where they're maybe not, they don't like drawing or they don't like, uh, they're maybe not confident as a creative writer, but when they've got a 3D material, it's been a really kind of, that's been their thing and that's really got them into it. So I think, um, although it, it's sometimes something that we it's not a priority in the budget I think it's so so important um but having said that I do think there are so many uh really good ways of kind of recycling reusing things that um can be really cost effective as well and I I'm a member of like a bartering group on Facebook where sometimes somebody will be like I've got 300 milk bottles or something like that and so taking those opportunities to um, use like non-traditional craft materials can be really useful as well uh, but yeah you've got to be a savvy shopper I think <laughs> uh, I don't know if anyone anyone else wanted to say anything about that but Thanks so much Lydia sorry can I ask another question <laughs> as well and it was just related to um the fact that this this particular resource was um you know delivered into the classroom during kind of restrictions um and how helpful did you find um the accompanying booklet and then the there was also a film that was uh, you know that accompanied the activity as well and is that something that was that was really that was you know useful and valuable and if if we went back to a scenario where or experimented with makers in the classroom so having a an artist or professional in the classroom would those resources still be of value in terms of you know your resort teaching resources yeah so i think um in a way um it's actually really fortunate that the way that these were delivered by the teacher because it means that the resources that i was able to get other than the pack which is a shame that we can't give one of those to every school but that booklet is what i used so if anyone else wants to take that up that that was all I needed to be able to kind of deliver the project. Um, I, ha I haven't met Deirdre before today, and it's really nice to see you, but I was able to, through the book, uh, kind of have everything that I needed to take on those skills. Um, and that was, I mean, as a teacher, that was really, like, quite interesting and, and 
kind of exciting challenge to have. I, I think it's I'm also really excited every time we have someone come into school. I think that that's so important as well for children to be able to meet craftspeople and, and ha- ask questions. And um, I, like when people can bring their own work into school and talk about their sketchbooks and things like that, I think is like magical and beyond what I can do in the classroom. But I think in the, this context, it's um, it's something that's actually a real asset is that this resource is is so intensive and so kind of clear that you can deliver it as a non-specialist. Um, and I can't remember what the other part of what you said was, um, but yeah, but I think it, I would recommend um, people having a go. Um, also, I, YouTube is your friend because if, you, if you're a little bit stuck on how do I do this, there's somebody who will explain it in very, very de- detailed words. Um, but kind of any kind of craft. So, um, We do have a couple of um, questions in the chat. And the um, first one um, from um, Neil, who was, I, I'm not, I think this potentially could be directed, and maybe both to you, Lydia, and, and perhaps actually also um, the um, sort of Mate Learn um, team, which is, did anything go wrong? Um, I think that's maybe a question for you, Lydia. And then maybe whether there's anything you change about the implementation and how that was delivered. And I think here maybe, Lydia, you might have some things to say, but I think that's also something that we as a project team are thinking about for the next iterations. Um, so maybe um, Katrina might want to come respond on that too. But I'll, I'll, I'll let you answer first, Lydia. If there was anything that yeah. went wrong or you changed? Um, I think I would. I would maybe try and have an extra member of staff in for support so I kind of did it flying solo and it would have been really helpful I think to have maybe a like a PSA or someone if if the resource not allowed it um uh, I also I mean as I said in the presentation I kind of switched things around a little bit with the order and that, that worked quite well um but I think overall I was quite I was really pleasantly surprised with how how it worked I think I was a bit apprehensive um it was a class that I'd not been with for that long as well and uh, because it was after Covid it was kind of there was some kind of reluctance with certain things um but I think it was people really got the children really got on board with it and got quite um really engaged with it um I kind of wish that I'd had the time to build on it and and kind of have a sort of maybe prog- progression of those skills that I would carry on with. Um, it was very much a standalone thing, although we did other curricular things around it, we didn't do any more sewing after that. And so I think that would have been kind of maybe something I would do if I was doing it again, is build it into a programme or maybe teach it in a different way and rather doing it than doing it as an intensive day, like split those out and have that as maybe a term of, of your art and design lessons or your technology lessons. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think just to echo that, um, we designed it so that it could be completed within three one-hour sessions or over a day like like Lydia um, did. But it would be, I think, an ambition of ours to make that into a longer-term programme. Um, and also, like a key a key thing for us would be to look at the resources um, and and how we can provide those in a more democratic way um, to teachers across. The, the country and um, so that's those are the two kind of key issues that we came up with immediately as we looked at how to develop a pilot project and, and the, poten- the potential of how that pilot project could be rolled out across uh, more schools so we we worked with um, I think it was uh, six schools in total three in Argyll and Butte and three in Glasgow City and um, but we'd obviously love to expand that out and I think if we expanded it out we would look at some of the practicalities of that and the barriers that teachers might face um, really seriously as a part of that. Yeah and um, just picking up too I think um, more like Sutherland in the chat is echoing those same um, difficulties around accessing resources um, and um, I, I would encourage uh, particularly um, you to look at some of the PDFs that are available and that, that we've posted in the chat because I think um, particularly this project can be um, delivered with, with, although there were beautiful packs sent out to schools, actually with, with relatively um, 
yeah, limited uh, materials, but you, you have the activity as a PDF to, to guide your work. Um, I hope that helps. Um, but I think that's covering the chat, and we are moving swiftly towards the um, sort of five o'clock end. So I'm going to hand back to Katrina just to round us off and do. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Francis, and, and thanks to everyone um, for asking. Uh, questions there that made, made a lot, make a lot of sense to the way that we've been thinking about developing Make Learn. Um, 